love the way OSA brings together public university breeders, farmers, researchers, with those who distribute our food, cook our food, and seed companies, and brings them all to the same table. OSA has become the convener of all these voices so that we can be heard by one another. And I don't think that there's any other organization that has uh, near the influence of, as OSA. On August 4th, Monday morning, 2003, uh, I got a phone call from a board member who said, there's a fire at the offices. And flames were shooting out of the walls of the building. This was not just our work, this is the work of so many gardeners and farmers over so many generations. And for some of those Fridays, we were the only kind, the only place that had them. And it was an incredible loss. And in some ways it underlined that we really needed to go forward with Organic Seed Alliance and do it with deep seriousness and a deep commitment to create our own seed systems and to create our own diversity for the needs of local and regional agriculture. We created this diversity in the first place, we can do it again. Abundant Life Seed Foundation burning down and this phoenix arising out of the ashes, you know, or as Organic Seed Alliance, it's so poetic in many ways that that's the way it happened. Organic Seed Alliance's mission is to advance the ethical development and stewardship of agricultural seed. We accomplish our goals through research, education, and advocacy programs that work together with farmers, plant breeders, seed industry, and other stakeholders to ensure that farmers have the seed they need. Seed is the fundamental building block of our food chain, a food chain that is under pressure but can be sustained, even flourish, with broad support. Organic Seed Alliance is a proactive force for advancing the biodiversity of organic seed, enhancing access to organic seed, and reclaiming the power of seed by working with farmers to grow resilient organic food for today and for generations to come. My husband started our farm in 1973 at a time when there was no organic infrastructure. We didn't have organic distribution, people didn't know what organic meant, we didn't have standards of certification. But most crucial of all is we had no awareness of organic seed. So until 2002, most of our varieties as an organic farm had fungicide on it. And we didn't have any other options. We really stand on the edge of a precipice is in the sense that we have lost so much genetic diversity and we see such a single species system that is so fragile. This loss of seed and diversity for all humanity is something that Organic Seed Alliance addresses. They can't go back and get seeds, get diversity that is now gone. But they can preserve what's here and they can develop tomorrow's seeds from which we can go and repair the damage that has been done and create this future. To me, that is hope. On-farm stewardship of seed ensures that seed is not only conserved, but continues to grow and to breed new varieties for the needs of organic agriculture. I think when people hear the word plant breeding, they think scientists in lab coats, working in sterile conditions with plants and petri dishes. They think about genetic engineering, but at Organic Seed Alliance, we really represent and the work that we do as plant breeders as continuing the same process that farmers have been doing for thousands of years, selecting whole plants for a wide range of traits in the context of the particular soils that they're being grown. And it's a much bigger, broader picture than when we talk about genetic engineering. Okay. At Organic Seed Alliance, we focus our breeding efforts primarily on developing open pollinated varieties. Open pollinated allow a farmer or a grower or a backyard gardener to take that variety and adapt it and evolve with it over time. 
and also empowering them to steward the genetics and steward these varieties into the future. We should keep this one? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty too. <laughs> In every region, you're going to have this severe climate swings that we're beginning to see. This is going to increase. And so open pollinated organic seeds is extremely important to the future, I think, of humanity. It's because the farmer is going to be able to take the seed that came from one region and go to another region and within a few generations adapt that seed so it'll work in that region. These plants have to be able to feed themselves. They've got to be able to live in the symbiotic relationship with all that microbiology in the soil and be able to adapt to those situations. By working with Organic Seed Alliance, it, you know, it's, it's broadened out my view of things, not only helping me develop the breed itself, but helping me to understand the importance of organic seed in the broader economic system of seed. This is called bud pollinating. When you tear open the buds and self-pollinate them, I've done it with broccoli, which is a closely related plant to kale. They're of the same species. It's just amazing and awesome to partner with Nash and his crew and so far things are looking good. And these are the tiny little seeds. This is a green kale that we're taking to seed. That's a kale that we've been working on about 20, 22 years. Kind of got it to the point where it's ready to go out and to the big time and uh, it's a nice looking green hardy winter kale. It's one of the nicest seed crops I've seen educating farmers on how to reintegrate seed stewardship into their farm will have a much longer lasting impact than simply just making good seed accessible to them. And so I think the educational component of the work that OSA does and also what we're doing at CR Seeds is essential to the future sustainability of our organic seed movement. We're creating new economic models for ensuring that that seed is commercially available broadly that organic farmers across the country have access to more organic seed choices, and the farmers that invested their time and resources in the plant breeding process are rewarded as well. Well, this is stock seed of Abundant Bloomsdale, a variety that Organic Seed Alliance has bred over the last 10 years with eight organic farms on the Olympic Peninsula. It's great. It's a fairly disease resistant and nice dark green uh, round oval leaves. Mm -hmm. And we've been selecting it for slowness to bolting and winter hardiness. We have a program that we partner with Green Bank Farm to make seed cleaning equipment available to farmers in the area to help them move into seed production. Threshing takes the seed off the stalk and breaks up the leaf and stick material so we can separate it from the seed. We've just been so fortunate to be working with Organic Seed Alliance for all of the technical expertise that you've taught us. I often think that I've got a, a, almost a free master's degree. <laughs> a lot of really great advanced level information on seed growing production and breeding that I couldn't have gotten anywhere else. Super grateful for that ready to share with farmers all over the country. Supporting your local organic farms is so important. We're working with local farmers, with regional farmers, with universities, seed industry, collaborators nationwide to strengthen your local farm and strengthen all of our regional seed systems. We've collaborated with the Organic Seed Alliance on NOVIC, the Northern Organic Vegetable Improvement Collaborative. NOVIC is a project that's bringing together researchers, plant breeders across the northern U.S., looking at the challenges all the growers in that region face of a very short, turbulent growing season, and trying to figure out how to get crops that are produced quickly, efficiently, and also store well, so getting a season extension, a market extension, for a longer economic benefit for the farmers. You guys have this beautiful production field. It gives us the opportunity to come out and select from tens of thousands of plants, which is a great genetic opportunity and improvement. As farmers, we had this really incredible opportunity to work in a participatory breeding project with Organic Seed Alliance, Bill Tracy at the University of Wisconsin, Dr. John Navazio was involved. They did the participatory breeding on a number of farms, and one of them was ours. And we actually grew the corn on Martin's farm, and we selected things that would germinate well, we selected things that would be disease resistant, and we selected things that would taste great. And we did this over a period of five years, 
We would all be in the field biting the ears of corn. We would argue about which ones are better. Nice corny flavor. We would all finally agree, these are the families we want to advance. It was a lot of fun. It's been a partnership all through this process to today, when Who Gets Kissed has been released through High Mowing Seed. Farmers, they're really excited because they're gonna be able to buy Who Gets Kissed. And because it's open pollinated, they can select for the traits for their region from that corn and they can develop an offshoot, you might call it, or subcultivar from that open pollinated that can grow into a cultivar adapted to their region. I have been told by a lot of farmers and a lot of seed companies that bolting is a really big challenge. With OSA has worked collaboratively with many of the land grant universities across the nation and they have had a really strong partnership for many years with WSU. And so we've created a new partnership uh, called the Organic Germplasm Consortium. The goal of the partnership is to have a community seed bank working with different breeders to look at what varieties would do really well out here. And then OSA could take it a step further with screening and selection and breeding work to actually create new varieties specifically for the regions. 16 different varieties of carrots that were grown right here. It's just like a little mandala. <laughs> it's a rather unusual buffet because it's outdoors and it's a tasting buffet. We're gonna be grading some of the food, all of which was grown right here. I like the raw. Raw. There's raw. I like that one. It puts the ownership of this fundamental resource for the food we eat into the hands of the farmers where it really needs to be, rather than in the hands of the corporate ownership who is strictly running it as a profit source. Organic Seed Alliance's State of Organic Seed Project is an ongoing project to monitor the progress we're making in meeting the organic seed needs of farmers here in the U.S. When we have a shared roadmap and vision for organic seed, the progress will be faster, more coordinated, and longer lasting. And together, following this roadmap, we can collaborate on ongoing research, education, and policy needs to ensure that we continue to meet the seed needs of organic farmers. The most powerful act that any gardener or farmer can take is to save seed, to conserve and protect our genetic heritage, the diversity of our seed that we rely on to feed ourselves. This is important because whoever controls our seed controls our food. A professor from Michigan State University College of Law, James Chen, published a piece in the Wisconsin Law Review arguing that the revolutionary makers of chemical genetic inputs need to be protected from agrarian romantics like you all. And I quote from the paper, many farmers and many of their advocates believe that saving seed is essential to farming, but it is not. <laughs> Farmers today often buy seed, just as they buy other agricultural inputs. That way lies the path of economic progress. Seed saving is merely one of many traditional practices that have collapsed in contemporary agriculture. Seed saving, however, poses a uniquely powerful threat to the suppliers of agricultural inputs. Agriculture affects everything important that's happening. It creates wars. It causes hunger. Every fundamental question that we're saying, how are we going to make a better future, has a connection to agriculture. And seeds are the basis of agriculture. There may be some time in the future where there's a Jetson-esque process for producing basic nutrients in stainless steel vats. We put this chemical in, we get these nutrients out. That may happen, but that will not be farming and that will not be food. Local quinoa, second most nutritious thing a human can consume. And Andy and the mother grain growing right here in the Pacific Northwest. Pretty neat stuff. The one thing that really needs to happen is chefs need to educate through their menus the importance of seed. The way carrots 
used to be. And there now, finally. The science, the craft, the art, and the love of seed are needed now more than ever. There is no gathering of 450 people focused on organic seeds happening anywhere else on the planet. We will be able to transform the way this planet grows food. And we need to. This is the only planet we've got. When my children were young, they learned about the life process through the act of planting seeds. And they said, Mom, can we plant these seeds, the ones that came from this plant, next year? They had this sense of next year. And so many of us have lost the sense of next year. So the fundamental work of Organic Seed Alliance is helping to ensure that there will be a next year.